Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to PGNIG third quarter 2015 Financial Results Conference Call. I will now hand you over to Adam Kucha, Investor Relations Officer. Sir, please go ahead. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our presentation. Today's conference is devoted to financial results of the PGNIG Group in the third quarter and the first nine months of 2015. It is hosted by Mr. Jarosław Baus, the CFO, accompanied by Ms. Aleksandra Dobasiewicz and myself, Adam Kucza, from our Investor Relations team, as well as by our performance team. Let us begin with a presentation of financial results, and then we will proceed with our customary Q&A session. I would now like to ask uh, Mr. Jarosław Baus to take the floor. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, today we, uh, uh, we would like to present uh, the, uh, the results of uh, third three quarters uh, 2015, which uh, uh, showed very good and uh, stable financial results, uh, accompanied with uh, solid performance of the stock price uh, versus uh, the whole market and especially in contrast to energy sector. Uh, we are practically the, uh, the only company survived uh, during the last uh, month in terms of, uh, of maintaining the, um, uh, the market value. Um, the environment uh, we respect both uh, to macro conditions and, uh, and, and, uh, and the market was very dynamic uh, in that time, <coughs> especially uh, the sharp decrease in oil price that we experienced, uh, sliding gas price, uh, and sharp appreciation of uh, U.S. dollars. All these uh, three uh, categories uh, exert very um, important uh, uh, they, they they, they, they are very important in terms of, uh, of the uh, behavior of our, of our company. And this is uh, reflected in uh, weaker results of ENP uh, segment, uh, where the EBITDA dropped uh, by uh, 21% comparing to, uh, to uh, last year results. But this was uh, more than compensated uh, by very strong performance of trade and storage where we uh, experienced 169% uh, increase in EBITDA in turn. Apart from, uh, from macroeconomic uh, conditions, it's worth mentioning the uh, rising uh, competitive pressure uh, on uh, gas uh, price, leading to tightening of, uh, of the sale margin from 10% uh, at the beginning of the year to percent in third quarter and uh, this is likely to be continued uh, uh, in the remaining part of the year uh, and uh, it's also worth mentioning that on the whole B2B segment we practically entirely diverged from tariffs to market prices uh, what is also important is the uh, efficiency improvement program which goes well um, uh, so far, uh, we managed to uh, to decrease the uh, the cost on the total base by uh, almost 500 million, and uh, because it goes well, uh, our uh, target was uh, increased from 800 to 940 million by the end of uh, next year, and um, and I think that it was also. Uh, uh, very well reflected in uh, in the market uh, in the market price. As far as the uh, uh, the other uh, detailed uh, issues, uh, I uh, would like my my colleagues to continue with uh, the presentation. We will go with slide number two of financial performance in the third quarter of 2015 when we delivered some results. Uh, seen against the background of low crude oil prices and gradual cuts in natural gas prices, the group's two main commodities, the EBDA of 1.3 billion złotych should be considered a success. 
It is only 14% below the level reported in the same period last year. In the period we saw oil prices in the slotted tumble by over 40% and a 13% reduction in gas prices. Net profit halved chiefly due to a 51 million watt impairment loss recognized on Europol gas shares and disclosed in share in net profit loss of equity accounted entities. The other factor with a negative impact on net profit was the effect of income tax of nearly 100 million, 190 million watt being, being accounted for in the PNL, which was comparable to last, year, last year's figure despite pre-tax profit being lower by over 300 million watt. The reason is the high tax rate in Norway. However, we would like to remind that no income tax is paid in Norway due to an accumulated tax asset of 1.1 billion Norwegian kron. Slide number three. A growing impact of operational efficiency improvements, including those implemented under the Efficiency Improvement Program, is seen in cumulative data for Q1-Q3 2015. This, combined with lesser effect of non-cash one-off items, drove EBITDA up 6% over 300 million zloty. In a tough business environment affecting all upstream companies, our results were supported by increased output of crude oil and condensate in our Norwegian subsidiary, which exceeded 0.5 million tons, that is 150,000 tons more than in the first three quarters of 2014. The effect of non-cash one-off items on EBITDA was approximately 0.4 billion zloty lower. Revenues and expenses grew mainly as a result of the exchange sale requirement and growing volumes of gas traded through the Polish Power Exchange. To achieve pro forma data comparability, an amount of approximately 5.1 billion zloty should be subtracted from these items, in which case we would see expenses fall faster, 7%, than revenues, 5%, translating into improved profitability at the group level. That's now slide number four cumulative EBITDA by segment. For the past few quarters, we have seen shifts in the contributions of individual segments to consolidated EBITDA. Last year, our exploration and production business accounted for almost 59% of the group's total, while the share of trade and storage was around 6%. In nine months of 2015, these figures stood at 44% and 14% respectively. Besides the strong results delivered by trade and storage business, we would like to draw your attention to the improved performance of distribution segment. Its EBITDA increased by over 225 million zloty on a 4% rise in the volume of distributed gas, a 3% increase in the distribution tariff, and a positive effect of system balancing amounting to 194 million zloty compared with uh, plus uh, 69 million zloty cumulatively the year before. The generation business also contributed to the group's strong performance. Although heat power uh, output fell, uh, fell slightly compared with nine months 2014, the segment EBDA rose by more than 108 million zloty, driven by uh, lower fuel prices, with largest drops uh, reported in the first quarter. Higher heat tariffs, higher, higher heat tariff price, and a 7% rise in the price of electricity sold. It is important to note that almost all of uh, the planned electricity output is sold before the start of a year, which has an impact on the selling prices. Uh, slide number five. The efficiency improvement programs continue to be implemented across the group. Cumulatively, by the end of September 2015, sustainable savings exceeded, exceeded 470 million zloty, which is 84% of the cost reduction target plans to be achieved by the end of 2015. The main efficiency improvement initiatives include revision of overhaul plans, optimization of procurement policy within the pg and group, redefinition of benefit packages related to particular job positions, optimization of running cost of the distribution grid, joint insurance policy, and workforce, workforce streamlining. The optimization target for the end of 2016 has been increased by 19% from 786 to 937 million zloty. Following the settlement of actual performance and the start of planning for 2016, also 2014 has been subject to a minor adjustment. 
Slide number six. In the third quarter and in the first nine months of the year, the US dollar remained strong against Zloty. In the third quarter alone, the currency strengthened against the Zloty by 20% year on year. The euro has slightly strengthened against the Zloty as well in the past few months. The price of oil fell 52% to $50 per barrel year on year. Combined with the strong dollar, this drove down the nine month average price of crude oil in the Zloty by 30% year on year to 241 Zloty per barrel and by 16% on the second quarter of 2015. Uh, following on slide number seven, in nine months 2015, Tariff price reduction had a major impact on the price of gas sold by pg and in Poland. In the first third quarter alone, the price was down by almost 9% year-on-year from 117 to 106 watt per megawatt hour. This compares with the average price of one-year forward contract for delivery in 2015 for the period from August, when pg and retail was established, to December 2014 of 105 watt per megawatt hour. This is the approximate price at which 2015 gas supplies could be secured through the Polish power exchange. Slide number eight, exploration and production. The segment EBDA for the third quarter was down by almost one-fourth year-on-year, showing resilience to the shock of oil price in the slot having slumped by 41%. EBDA was supported by a 36% year-on-year rise in the volumes of crude oil and condensate salt which had an additional effect of pushing up depreciation and amortization expense in the Norwegian subsidiary. Revenue from geophysical and drilling services was down 134 million zloty to 67 million zloty. Uh, let's look now to trade and storage, slide number nine. Gas sales volumes rose as PGI GSA fulfilled their requirement to sell gas through the exchange, as you can see from the chart at the bottom of the page. Volume data is close to achieving year-on-year -year comparability in the third quarter of 2015. It is enough to subtract 0.3 billion cubic meters of gas traded through the PPE in July. It was also subtracted with the volumes of gas traded by PST in Germany and the Netherlands, which rose by 0.2 billion cubic meters. We will see a decline in the sales volumes in Poland, which has to do with, with the liberalization process of the Polish gas market. A negative operating margin on high methane gas of minus 3% reported in the second quarter continued in the third quarter. Both periods are seasonally affected by low sales volumes and relatively high fixed cost components of the margin. We also need to remember about tariff price reductions, which led to a 9% year-on-year reduction in gas prices and the discount scheme. It is important to note that the revenue generated on gas fuel covers gas fuel costs, which is shown on the chart below, with plus 5% margin in Q3 and plus 7% in nine months of 2015. The spread to minus 3% operating margin points to the significance of the other cost items, including transmission charges at entry points, storage costs, white certificates, and hedging transactions. When comparing a BDA year on year, we should remember about the 141 million water reversal of the gas inventory write down recognized in the third quarter of 2014, compared with a 19 million water write down recognized in the first third quarter of 2015. Slide number 10. Volumes of gas injected to underground storage facilities increased in the third quarter of 2015 compared with 2014, due to gas purchase costs being lower year on year and quarter on quarter. The volume of gas imported by pg and GSA to Poland rose by 12% on the third quarter of 2014 to 2.4 BCM. The imports from east of Poland up 0.5 BCM. As regards the sales structure by customer category, the volumes delivered to CHP plants increased by 130 million cubic meters following the reinstatement of the system supporting cogeneration sources in May of last year. The climb in sales of the, through nitrogen processing plants and refineries decelerated, while sales to other industrial customers fell. PST sales volumes climbed by almost 400 million cubic meters on rising gas trading volumes. Slide 11. 
In the quarter, the distribution business delivered strong operating results. Revenue rose by over 140 million water year on year, on a 6% increase in the volumes of distributed gas and a 3% rise in tariff prices. At the same time, operating expenses fell 16% on lower system balancing costs, including the cost of gas purchase to cover imbalances, and on a workforce reduction in the period by over 1,700 full-time equivalents year-on-year. Net results of system balancing totaled 175 million water in the third quarter of 2015, compared with 59 million water in the third quarter of 2014. Based on historical data and the temperature-based sales forecasting method, which in principle evens out winter-summer seasonal variations, this trend is expected to reverse to negative to a significant extent in the fourth quarter of this year. Slide number 12, generation. In the third quarter of 2015, segment operating results slightly deteriorated to minus 69 million water compared with minus 47 million water in the third quarter of 2014. A 4% decline in revenue from heat sales and stable revenue from sales of electricity generated by PGNIG were coupled with a 54 million water drop in revenue from electricity trading due to reduced trading volumes. The overall result was an 18% decline in the segment's revenue year on year. In the same period, operating expenses fell 14% as a result of a 7% drop in costs of fuel accompanied by higher generation volumes. The rise in heat tariff prices effective since mid-August 2015 and low coal prices should continue to support the segment's performance. And last slide, operating expenses. The third quarter saw a fall in certain expense items, including other services, employee benefits, and other raw materials and consumables used, which was a result of an efficiency improvement at the pg and group and of decreasing scope of activities by drilling and oil services. The group's workforce was reduced by over 4,000 staff, or 14% year-on-year. Also, gas purchase costs rose slightly year-on-year, year, which coupled with volumes rising by 0.4 billion cubic meters translated into lower unit cost of gas. The 141 million water reversal of a write-down on gas inventories had a major impact on net other income expenses in the third quarter of 2014, compared with a write-down of minus 19 million water recognized in the third quarter of 2015. Thank you for your attention. Uh, operator, we can start Q&A session. We will now start the questions and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, please press zero 01 on your telephone keypad. Thank you for holding. We have a question from Piotr Dzinzelowski, Citibank. Please go ahead. Hi, yes, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I'd like to ask you a question regarding your guidance. Uh, what the main drivers do you expect in the fourth quarter? Because the guidance implies relatively large losses on the trading business. How big is the loss? Can you quantify it? Uh, and, and is the guidance not too cautious? So can you elaborate on this a little bit? And then um, I'd like to ask you, because you stated that you are the only company that kept the value among the Polish utilities or state-controlled companies. Why do you think this is the case, and what is the risk that your market value will deteriorate as well? Good morning, everyone. This is Piotr Sibol speaking. Uh, Piotr, responding to your first question uh, regarding guidance, uh, so we'll definitely we will not disclose the uh, potential loss on, on trading, but uh, I, w I would respond in the other way. Uh, due to the um, significantly, maybe not significantly, but still decreasing the price of gas, uh, the, 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 the curve for the uh, Q4 and Q1, uh, we, we can see the risk of impairments uh, of, of stock. This is the first thing. The another thing is the shrinking margin which was disclosing in our presentation a quarter by quarter. 
Uh, and uh, so this is the, the trading segment. Another fact regarding the guidance as a whole number, uh, risk of impairment of, of the assets in the ENP segment due to the low price of oil and, and gas. And the distribution segment, which was disclosed and, and mentioned during the uh, presentation, the potential reverse of the system balancing figure in the Q, Q4. So that's why we, uh, we increase uh, the, the guidance to the level comparable uh, to the previous year. Uh, but you have to remember that the uh, oil prices are significantly low comparing to last year. And Q4 last year uh, was uh, increased uh, uh, because of the uh, delivery cutting from uh, gas from export and so replacing the cheap gas from, from Germany, which we we not expect in the Q4 of 2015. <coughs> mm. uh, so how much the impairment do you expect? Now look, we are, you know, 10 months through the year, you come out, we're talking about the one single quarter, we're not talking about, you know, next year or five years outlook or anything like this, we're talking about the and next two months, definitely which yes, probably but, have pretty uh, hedged, I mean. But once we uh, calculate the, uh, the discounted cash flow value of the, of the assets, we, we take into account the, the curve for the following quarters and, and even uh, years, so it's not the case of only Q4 regarding the prices. Okay, um, thank you very much. And the second question, um, um, if if I can ask, I mean, you know, we clearly probably electric utilities have been falling down, and uh, you uh, stated that you are the only one that kept the value. Do you think this can reverse? You you know, we t we talked about Pignic Thermica being involved in rescue of Co Co Compania Venglova. What could be your involvement in the rescue of the mining sector? or in the potential consolidation mergers? Um, we are not considering to be involved in, uh, in Compania Venglova. And Picnic Thermica as well? Uh, yes. Uh, we, I mean the whole group. Um, okay. understand. Thank you very much. We have a question from Monica Rayore, Societe Generale. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, good morning, gentlemen. I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, um, have you extended any further discounts to wholesale customers in Q3 or in October? Yes, the discount policy is continued. So, uh, both for the I mean, wholesale uh, customers. Uh, to more customers. Yes, especially especially small and medium enterprises. So okay. the segment that is uh, hand handled by by PG and retail, that is the target for ongoing and increasing dis discounts. All right. Okay. And uh, regarding the ENP segment, uh, were there any impact of dry wells uh, in this quarter? Because I don't think that was mentioned in the presentation. Yes, there was 25 million watt uh, impairment uh, dry well dry well cost, which can be seen on the cost uh, cost slide in the presentation. All right. Okay. Thank you. And um, regarding uh, the mandatory Polish stock exchange trading requirement, uh, is it something that you have to do quarter on quarter, uh, every quarter, or uh, have you completed this requirement for 2015? This is the ongoing legal requirement. We have to fulfill that each year, uh, starting mm -hmm. from 2013. So in 2015, yes, and then in 2016 as well. That is uh, just to just to remember, just to just, just to recall the figure. Uh, that's 55% of volumes uh, that go into the transmission system. Okay, and, and based on the uh, and based on the energy load, this 55% is the maximum level, and we will not expect to increase. 
But it doesn't okay. mean that okay. once we fulfill 55% that we stop uh, trading on uh, power and exchange. So it's possible okay. that we exceed this level by a few percent okay. every year. That's clear. And uh, is there an update, updated uh, guidance on CAPEX for 15, 2015? No, no update on that. So CAPEX remains the same as before. Okay. And uh, finally, my last question would be, um, could you shed some more light on the development of uh, the employee union strike? And uh, have you quantified any impact on your financials because of it? As, uh, as it is stated in the current report, we haven't, uh, we haven't calculated that. We don't know at this moment, we don't know, we don't know when and if uh, such strike will, uh, will take place. So still, before that, there will be some talks between the management board and the trade unions and we will see about the results. And if any, it's an issue of only PGN GSA, the mother company, not the entire group. So the, the, the potential strike or protest is regarding only 5,000 employees out of 25 in the inside group. So, so far, no, no provision. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, all your contributions. Thank you. We have a question from Thomas Fletcher, Ashton Bank. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I got two questions. Um, first of all, on this Qatar gas agreement, uh, what can you tell us about the financial impact in the third quarter, and what are the expectations for the fourth quarter and potentially for 2016? That would be my first question. And the second one would be about the Norway tax assets. I think you mentioned 1.1 billion polis loti overall. Uh, how can we uh, imagine this issue? I mean, when did this tax asset will be exhausted fully? When do you expect to pay cash tax uh, after your Norwegian profit? Thank you. Regarding the Qatar gas contract, uh, we haven't disclosed the figure. The impact is indeed rising. So from Q1 to Q2 to Q3, uh, the impact has raised. Uh, it is still not material enough to, uh, to point to the figure. Uh, as, uh, as for the expectations for the future, that very much depends on the, um, on the efficiency of Qatari traders, of course. Um, but I also would like to point to the uh, price of, prices of gas uh, getting lower. So that's a question of forecast of, let's say, uh, TTF versus, uh, versus LNG prices, right? If, if there is some uh, some potential to um, to create margin, especially since, as you remember, the contract is 100% oil linked, the basic contract, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the basis for for the calculations. Okay, but this, is it is it like a single digit figure, which I can imagine, or or something more? We don't I comment on that. Per quarter. Okay. Okay. Norway. Ah, the tax assets in Norway, the second question, that was 1.1 billion uh, Norwegian, Norwegian crown. Okay. Not Polish lot. So in Polish lot is more or less say, half of it. Uh, how soon uh, will it be used? Uh, in a couple of years. It changes quite dynamically with, uh, with, with volumes that are improving on one hand, but on the other with uh, lower, uh, lower prices of hydrocarbons, both oil and gas. Mm -hmm. So uh, th this means that uh, the timings we pointed to a year ago are not any more valid, right? This uh, this goes uh, beyond next year, most probably beyond next uh, couple of years. Can you tell us how much was uh, in this quarter the pre-tax profit of your Norwegian operations? Do you have that figure in your head? No, no, no. We we don't we don't comment that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you very much. 
We have a question from Oleg Galbrur, Raiffeisen Bank. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, good morning, gentlemen. I have two questions. One is, could you provide more clarity on this 51 uh, million impairment related to Europol gas uh, recognition at equity? Uh, what was uh, the reason for, uh, for booking this impairment? And the second question is, uh, um, in the current uh, uh, environment of low oil prices, are you still uh, looking or are you still interested in uh, acquiring or potentially acquiring new uh, upstream assets to take advantage of the, the, the uh, uh, current market environment? Thank you. As far as the potential acquisition, uh, yes, we are uh, interested in uh, in continuing with the uh, with the acquisition program in the VNT sector. Uh, we are considering now several projects, and uh, uh, within next month, uh, I hope that uh, we'll be able to uh, to uh, inform you about the uh, the final results of this. Give us an idea of uh, how much money are you willing to invest into potential new acquisitions? Depending on on the project and uh, uh, and the profitability of the project. Of course, but at least a range. As far as, far as you know, the uh, our potential in this regard is quite significant. And regarding the first question, the Europol gas, um, this kind of a comparability of the uh, DC, DCF valuation, discounted cash flow, and uh, and the value of the of the shares as we've increased the sharing, the value compared with the valuation came up with the increased impairment uh, on the on the shares. So we have 51 minus 51 in the PNL. And it's nothing new. The accumulated uh, impairments uh, on, on these assets is something like 700 million police lotes. So it, it varies, uh, let's say, 50 to 100 million police lotes uh, for the last few years. Per year, you mean, yeah? Sorry? It's the, the, the 50 million that would be, that you said that it varies by 50 million uh, from year to year, yeah? Is that correct? Yeah, because let's say it could be because of what, because of the uh, some uh, let's say projected uh, financials. But uh, the, the the major problem is that the net income of Europol Gas is is limited according to the uh, agreements uh, signed in 2010 because uh, between Polish and Russian uh, partners in this in this business that let's say the. Uh, the, the maximum net profit of the of, of the Europol gas should be 21 million uh, plus uh, inflation and nothing more. And this revaluation should be done on a quarterly basis. Yeah, we we do it every quarter, but it, it doesn't mean that every quarter we recognize any impairment uh, loss or reverse or profit on it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We have a question from Piotr Kosowski, Ipopama Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Thank you for the presentation. And um, I have a question on cost of um, on cost of uh, Russian nut gas that you import. Um, is it correct calculation that in the fourth quarter, if we assume, let's say, 230? US dollar per 1,000 meter for gas. The Russian cost, uh, the, the the Russian nut gas cost equals to the cost of uh, to the price of gas in the Western Europe on let's say on TTF. Could you please confirm? Thank you. We don't forecast our costs uh, publicly, of course. Uh, the only thing I can comment, I've seen some analyses of external parties showing that already happening this quarter even. But that's, uh, that was uh, from, from external sources from um, Cambridge, uh, Terra, or from uh, sell side analysts like yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, was this calculation for Poland that pays uh, more oil linked price or for the Western Europe? That was Europe. That was European. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind you that if you wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. Thank you for holding. We have a question from Piotr Dzinsiłowski, Citibank. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you very much for taking my follow-up questions. Um, I wanted to ask you about the LNG terminal uh, and the cost uh, uh, that you discussed publicly in press that you would like to the cost to be shared equally, not only uh, be e imposed on you. Has there been any development decisions with this regard, and uh, what are the costs of the terminal annually, and uh, you know how much you will you 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 are likely to get of this and second can you please uh, tell us what are your expectations regarding regulated activities in light of recent reduction of the regulated work for the electric distribution how much could the work be reduced for you and what impact to your pnl does it make Regarding, regarding the regulated, uh, regulated activity in distribution, of course the WAG decrease in electricity distribution is a proxy for, uh, for our gas distribution as well. So that would be a good bet for, for the future, right, as uh, interest rates uh, were falling, uh, so the regulatory pressure surely is going to be there. We don't forecast uh, neither a BDA nor net profit per, per segment, so uh, you, need, you need to wait for the annual EBITDA forecast of the group till January, February next year. But is my logic correct that basically you're going to s see similar work reduction of 160 basis points, so you're going to lose you know, almost 200 million EBITDA? Is the logic correct? The logic is correct. The, the, WAC is a, the WAC for electricity distribution is a good proxy for gas distribution. As regards EBITDA, that, that doesn't have to be the case, especially if, uh, if the segment delivers uh, some extraordinary efficiencies. Sure. And, and, and if I may just uh, clarify one thing on the distribution, because if we see this WAC reduction, what was the positive effect this year? Um, from the balancing effect, and um, is this going to disappear next year as well? The effect of, of, bal of balancing, both for the quarter and for uh, and for and cumulatively, uh, have been shown in the presentation and in the Excel file, right? So, in the quarter, if it, it was uh, plus 100. 75 million zloty, and in the three quarters that was plus 194 million zloty, but it's not something that will be kept until the end of the year. As we pointed out, most probably in Q4, there should be a reversal of, uh, of the net balancing costs and revenues in the distribution. Okay. okay. As regards the LNG terminal costs, uh, the tariff or the terminal hasn't been published yet, so uh, there is not much to comment uh, in details. We, we forecasted this cost on a couple hundred million zloty in total, if PG&IG uh, would have to cover them all. For now, we are the only, uh, we are the only company that booked capacities at the terminal. Uh, what's going on there? Uh, the, we still we still are waiting for some regulatory decisions. Laws need to be changed to uh, to include this uh, let's say cost socialization of terminal into into the gas prices in Poland. The way and the details are not yet known. Okay, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. Thank you for holding. As 
a reminder, if you wish to ask a question, please press 01 on your telephone keypad. We have no other questions. Dear speakers, back to you for the conclusion. Thank you very much for your attention and for your questions. Uh, and if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at the Investor Relations team. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's conference. Thank you all for your participation. You may now disconnect.